99X, the morning X, Barnes and Leslie. Fram, you ever heard of obit pirating? No, what is that? It sounds creepy. It's a really bizarre industry that I wanted to bring up just so you're aware the next time you're searching someone's obituary. Which I have done. Sadly, people die. And there are some people that are so low to the earth that they want to make money off of your or your friend's deaths. And this is a thing. What? Yeah. It's called obit pirating. So what do they do? It's kind of an SEO play. We've got an expert from Wired who we're going to talk to right after I play you an example. And she will be able to explain it way better than I can. She wrote a really cool piece on it. But listen to this. It's basically an SEO play where they go through these funeral homes news and find people who've died because the funeral home is going to publish it, right? So they go on YouTube and make these videos that look official, but they're anything but purely for the sake of selling ads. This is terrible. Listen, you want to think terrible? And this is one of the best ones I could find. This is what one of them sounds like. Tell me how much of it you can understand. Uh, Ron, uh, I run the man- managing uh, ed- 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 editor at the correct hundred dot nine F M W N E X F. It sounds like Will's show in the afternoon. Close. But, well, what is he doing? He's reading, actually reading the obit. He's reading an obit, and it's just this dude. He looks like he's being held hostage somewhere, and he's just looking at the camera, reading it. But what they put as the thumbnail is a real picture of the person. Oh, that's and, terrible. And like a candle. So it looks like an official, you know how like those websites that put those obituaries out? Uh-huh. Oh, I have questions for this person that's coming on then. All right, let's bring her on. Katie Nibbs is a senior writer at Wired. Hey, good morning, Kate. Hello, good morning. This is very, very disturbing. Yes, it's definitely one of the weirder things I've stumbled upon on the internet recently. I knew nothing about this until Barnes just brought it up. Can you kind of like break it down? Like, what is this? And more importantly, how are people making money off of this? Sure. So obituary pirating on YouTube is basically um, an attempt to profit off of YouTube's advertising partnerships. Um, If you reach a certain number of subscribers or you get a certain number of hits on your videos cumulatively on a channel, you're eligible to um, join a program where you can then um, serve people ads before they watch their videos. So like if you go on YouTube and you click play and then you see an ad for Etsy, say, which is one of the ads that I saw when I was watching these videos, um, that means that the channel creator is receiving like a cut of the profit that comes from the advertising. So a lot of these videos only get maybe they'll have like one or two views some of them have hundreds but most of the view counts are very low but it's basically a volume game where people are very quickly and thoughtlessly uploading themselves uh doing like a one or two minute summary of an obituary and they're uploading these videos like several times an hour so that they can amass enough videos that they reach the threshold that they'll make money um so they're, they're just sort of banking on the fact that when people die, other people are curious about what happened and will be Googling their name. And they're hoping that basically that's enough to drive their business. It's, it's I, so... I don't, I'm trying to find out if, how much money they're making, and I haven't actually found out. I don't think it's a ton of money, but clearly it's enough to incentivize them to keep doing it. Well, these seem like third world countries doing the videos, as we heard in the example. Yeah. And the way it looks, it looks like a scene out of Homeland. Uh, but just the, the most of the views that I saw were five, eight views. How could that even be a long game play right. to making money? Like that just doesn't make sense. I know, and I, I do. I do think most of the people that I was able to track their locations were in Pakistan, and I, I mean, it does speak to just the like vast global disparity in what. Uh, good income to people because yeah i cannot imagine that they're making 
making anything that we would consider to be a livable <laughs> wage off of this. And it, also, it doesn't seem like it could really be a side gig because of how frequently they're uploading the videos. Like, it's clearly taking a substantial amount of time. So the economics behind it are, I, I think, more than anything, point to how desperate people are for any way to make money that they're turning to this, Ugh. like, objectively objectively very inefficient method. That's tragic in and of itself. And you, you, you sit there and wonder who's actually watching this. Well, I, I know who's watching it. Confused family members, right? Sure. I mean, because YouTube, yeah. because Google owns YouTube, when you search a name like that and they're getting SEO value from it, they're obviously sneaky yes. like that. So those videos are rising to the top of search the way that Google prioritizes video right, like that. Right, 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 right. So you're confusing family members. They have the little shot of the candle on the thumbnail and then a picture of the person. I feel like I wish there was a way someone could legally go after them for using that content or something that YouTube would just say, enough, just get this crap off. I agree, off. I agree. Yeah, I feel like, you. I mean, you know, YouTube can take videos down as, as they want to, so there could be a world where YouTube just decides this genre isn't appropriate, but I don't think it's going to happen just because I did talk to some copyright experts when I was reporting this case and asked them if there was anything family members can do. And they said, even though it's really tasteless and like the videos should be taken down, you know, for like moral decency reasons, legally, because these people are summarizing the obituaries, like they're not repeating them word for word. Right. It's not like a plagiarism situation and it would almost certainly fall under the fair use doctrine. And I understand that it would be a slippery slope. Like a lot of people have channels where they'll like summarize the news for their audiences. And if if someone was doing this respectfully, I could even see, you know, people grieving like it. And, you know, local news channels will, will talk about people's deaths when they happen. Like, I understand why there's no legal mechanism, but it doesn't make it any any better for yeah. people who are rightfully mm-hmm. upset when they see this sort of behavior online. It's it's a bummer. We're talking to Kate Nibb, senior writer at Wired, about the bizarre industry of YouTube obituary pirates. How did you come across this? So I came across it because a friend of mine, uh, one of his old classmates had recently passed away and he found a bunch of videos uh, doing these obituary pirating uh, clips. And he, he was watching them and wondering what was going on. And he knows that one of my hobbies is looking up weird stuff that's happening on the internet. So he asked me if I'd seen it. Um, I hadn't, but then I, I told him I'd look into it and the result is this story. Um, and once I publish this, it's been pretty overwhelming how many people have reached out and said that they've um, experienced the same thing when someone that they've been close to has passed away. Weren't people always pirating those text-based obituaries? I mean, that was a thing already. This just takes it to a just ugly level. Yeah, so actually one of my coworkers wrote a piece a few years ago looking into just uh, obituary pirating that happens where uh, companies will like basically copy and paste an obituary that's on legacy.com mm. or in local <sighs> newspapers to their own websites. That, because it is like more straightforward plagiarism, there have been some successful efforts to like stop people from doing it. There was a class action lawsuit in Canada in 2019 against a company whose whole business model was scraping legitimate obituaries off the internet and then republishing them and trying to divert web traffic. So that kind, it's sort of easier to control, I think, although it's definitely still happening. Like while I was researching this, I I came across so many different weird websites that seemed to exist simply to capitalize on people's interest in in those that they love to pass away. It's, It's definitely a very dark corner. It is. It's the dark side of YouTube. Yeah, it's the worst human being on the planet making money off of dead people. It's just, it's just ugly and gross, oh, and it's so disturbing to families. Well, thank you for kind of squaring that away because I, I didn't even really fully understand it either. I knew it was an SEO and a money play, but it's really weird. Obituary pirates. Look for mm. Kate's article in Wired. Kate, thank you. Thank you. The morning X. With Barnes and Leslie. 99X.